Fear does not exist in this cash bar, does it? No. Pain does not exist in this cash bar. No. No sense. Defeat does not exist in this cash bar, does it? No. What is the problem, Mrs. Gallagher? What did I do wrong? Like Cobra Kai, I saw I saw some social media posts that you were making. You're, you're disrespecting, disparaging the Cobra Kai dojo. I thought you needed some lessons. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> I was so excited for it, and then it's so after school special that I was like, I can't do this. Turn it off. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. <laughs> Uh, Kick with your legs, pussy. It's just so much fun to see to see Johnny Lawrence kind of down on his luck. Like there's the like the scene where he wakes up in his shitty apartment and uh, and he goes to his television install job after spitting out last night's beer. Like it's wonderful because <laughs> I kind of I looked at that and went, yeah, I've I've been through chapters in my life where that was what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you finally, Johnny Lawrence. You make emotional sense to me. I just like the, like, let's work this out as adults. And they're like, no, I'll meet you in the dojo. <laughs> <laughs> Some problems have to get settled in the dojo. Oh. I was watching that show and I was thinking about Johnny Lawrence and how, like, embarrassed, like, how it, this is, like, it's following him around. Like, the, the La Russa billboards and everything are always, like, right there overshadowing him constantly. Yeah. And I was thinking about one of the most, like, certainly the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me it kind of ties into the band that we're doing today. I was rescued by the effortless cool of an Australian when mm -hmm. I was about six years old. Like I was in first grade and we were putting on like a, like a class play. Mm -hmm. So like the, like the second graders and the third graders had crowded into a classroom to come see this play that we were putting on. And it was like this weird sort of picaresque trip through the forest that the main character was playing and I was playing the fox which is like the third character that's going to pop up on the hero's journey so I'm in a fox costume you know with my clothes on underneath and I'm crouched down behind this table that's upturned and it's made up to look like a hill and I'm really nervous because this is going to be my theatrical debut the big debut of the finest actor since Sir Laurence Olivier that kind of American <laughs> stuff is already going on in my head <laughs> and I got really nervous and I had to pee and I just like I, it just literally like it was an emergency level and I'm running like everything through my head like can I just stop the play and run to the bathroom or, or what can I do I couldn't do anything about it and the moment came and uh and and I just I just couldn't hold it any longer so I, I ended up uh, wetting my pants so I waited until the cue uh you know soaked from the waist down in my own urine and then when I, when I heard my cue line, I just popped up from behind the table in my little fox costume and I just went, I have peed my pants. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and I don't Is remember. there video of this anywhere? <laughs> no, there's no video of it. Thank God. This, this was not before camcorders, but definitely before camcorders had arrived on the Western Plains of Canada. Oh but you know God. who was on the Western Plains? A guy named Mr. Smith, who was from Sydney, Australia. And he knew exactly what to do. It was like he was waiting for it. He just dashed from the back of the room, picked me up by, the, by my armpits, and just like, lifted me up over the crowd and <laughs> zipped me out of that classroom before I could even hear any laughter. Oh, my gosh. He's on it. Like, I remember, like, obviously, this is a pretty scarring thing for, for me to go. But I don't remember the laughter. Like, he got me out of there before. Wow. I, it would be, still be ringing in my ears to this day if he hadn't got me out of there. I don't know if that would have made you never do stand up or stand up even earlier in life. <laughs> <laughs> I think it probably gave me the desire, like, like, like I have to redeem myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I yep. gotta make up for that disastrous show in front of fifty <sighs> plain Canadian kids. <laughs> God, that's the age my son is, and I could see him doing that, just like everybody. <laughs> 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 so they they gave me some pants from the lost and found to wear for the rest of the day so i wore them for the rest of the day and i went back into the classroom everybody was really nice like i think mr smith the fine australian school counselor 
probably went to the classroom and said, okay, when Ben comes back in, it's probably best if we don't laugh at him. About this. Be cool. Be cool, guys. <laughs> yeah. Be cool. Just treat like he's going through a lot right now. A lot emotionally. Yeah. Imagine so if it was hand. you. Yeah. <laughs> Could have happened to anybody and everybody else is going, there's no way that's ever going to happen to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I get on the bus to go home and, uh, and I, I sit next to, uh, to Trent Kramer, who's, uh, they, they, they were uh, big, tough Jehovah's Witness kids who liked to beat each other with garden hoses and shovels and things like that. Wow. And I sit down next to Trent and he starts making fun of me. He wasn't there. He didn't know that I'd peed my pants, but he looks down at my pants. Okay. And he says, hey, those are my pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So I was six years old and I had to give him his pants back under threat of, of being beaten by an angry nine-year-old. And I even did. today, I don't want to be beaten by an angry nine-year-old. Me either. So yeah, I took my pants off and I gave it to him and then I walked home without any pants on. Oh my God, that's a great story. <laughs> it was horrible. It was just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I was rescued by the effortless cool of an Australian. And ever since then, I have always thought that the Australians were the coolest people in the world. And we are gathered here today for episode 32 of Rock the Cash Bar to talk about In Excess. That's right. Michael Hutchins. Oh, Michael Hutchins. Oh, we also, we, I, like, Michael Hutchins is a, is a curly-haired and adorable man. Mm -hmm. We have a special guest today who is also a curly-haired and adorable man. Would you like to introduce our guest? Let's, let me go ahead and let him in until he can hear. There's our curly-haired, adorable man. <laughs> it looks like we woke him up. <laughs> let me see here. I was there trying to get you both. There we go. Yay. How are you? Good. We are just introducing you because we just told everybody we're going to talk about a, an adorable curly-haired man, and our guest is an adorable curly-haired man. Er, ladies Who's and the other one? <laughs> 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 ladies and gentlemen, Chris Fairbanks. Yay! Hi, how are you? Great to see you. Hey, Ben. It's been a long time. Hey, buddy. It's been far too long. How are you? Decades. It's been... <laughs> Welcome. It's been more than 15 years since I've even seen your face. Oh my I think God. so. It has been a long time. Isn't that weird? It's I'm great. great hmm? I was napping. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Where are you holed up during the pandemic and the collapse of modern society? I spent the first five months just in my apartment in uh, Los Angeles, not leaving very much at all. Right. Just on the heels of a breakup, which really made it more lonely. I started talking to my plants and uh, I started to feel like I was going crazy. And I came to Montana and I hadn't even been in the same room as another human until I drove up here and sat next to my dad. And I feel pretty normal and happy here. Yeah. It's, like, it's like I'm 17 again and having summer vacation. Oh, that's Not, wonderful. Worrying about anything. Camping, skateboarding, sliding down rivers on inner tubes or my butt. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's been really fun. Oh, and, I'm so glad uh, you did that. I'm so glad you did that. You're not just hanging out in that apartment. Yeah, I, I guess I'll go back. There's a show that I was supposed to do that's supposed to be safe. And the more I think about it, the more I just want to keep staying here and paying an exorbitant amount of rent at a place I'm not in, but I'm not paying any rent here. Yeah. Although I might, someone might sneeze on me and I'd kill my dad. So there's that. Uh, that's a bit of a fear. problem. Yeah, that's looming. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm done, no one's dependent on me in LA. I'll just, uh, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, and I was enjoying quarantine for a while. Uh, How's that? I thought I was gonna, I was surprised how much fun I was having alone. Yeah. <laughs> that took me by surprise. I thought maybe it would be sad, but I was making dollhouses. And That's right. Mm. They were great yeah, too. Just never leaving the house. But um, so I could go back. I have to decide. How soon? Can't, how long do you have? To decide? Mm-hmm. Uh, the end of this podcast. I want oh, to shit. make the decision by then. So if you could... <laughs> Maybe well, we can it's just 
No, I'll, we'll run I'll the figure calculations. it out. But I can go, I can drive back and then uh, come back here. This place will always be here. Yeah. I think I have the confidence to safely get on a plane and just uh, wear a mask. As long yeah. as you wear masks and don't touch stuff and then stick your fingers in your mouth, which I stopped doing this year. Thank good. <laughs> yeah. I cannot uh, keep my fingers out of my nose. It just won't happen, so I just don't go anywhere. Uh, yeah, you would have thought I would have curbed that. In sixth grade, I found a note between two girls that was about me, and they were saying how cute I was. But then in the end, they said, he picks his nose a lot. And the other <laughs> girl wrote back, yeah, I saw him eat one. And uh, <laughs> still, I guess, traumatized and scarred by that. But... Uh, <laughs> I'm off. I'm off the uh, the snacking, but I, I do put my phalanges up my nasal passage. You guys want to talk about something else? <laughs> sure. Well, okay. you you missed our opener. Ben was telling the story of how he peed his pants in front of everybody during a school play when he was six. So. Oh man. Yeah. That was. Childhood trauma. Here. Did you? Just, I'm going method, you guys. I thought the character would piss himself. I think that uh, was pretty formative for me. Like my peeing my pants in that in that stage play was like Bruce Wayne watching his parents get murdered. Like it just oh, completely yeah. formed me. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is that immediate moment is what you made you start doing comedy. <laughs> Yeah. Now I want to make them laugh on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's talk about a little devil inside from NXS. Uh, the devil inside, the devil inside. It's going to be impossible to read these lyrics without trying to get all smoky voiced. <laughs> Are you go. able to play it? Oh, sweet. We're not allowed to play it. So what we do, Chris, is we just, the first thing we do is go through the lyrics line by line and just kind of talk about them that way. And then we'll go into personal stories about it or um, things that we know about the song being written and then about the band. So it'll be pretty Yeah, cool. it's weird that you can legally read the lyrics, but you can't legally have people hear them. Yeah. Yeah. But we can also legally, like we have, you know, Chuck Savage, right? We have, we have Chuck yeah. Savage. He's a great musician. Like he does like versions of these songs in his home yeah. studio for us. So we, yeah. we, we play those and that's legal. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and as long as you change the lyrics to where it's sandwich inside, sandwich inside. <laughs> Make it a parody. Yeah. <laughs> you got a weird outlet. Yeah. It changes, switches genre to comedy. <laughs> Deviled eggs inside. Yeah, yeah, deviled eggs inside. Thank you. <laughs> Better than sandwich and chai. I was going for a syllable. Okay. Here, Here comes the woman with the look in her eye, raised on leather with flesh on her mind. Oh. All right, stop you right there. What yeah. the fuck is raised on leather? Yeah, that sounds like something from Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. I was going to say, flesh I on the mind. <laughs> I was, I think these were the first two lines of, of, of Corbin's uh, wedding vows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> Raised on leather with flesh on her mind. So obviously we're dealing with a bad girl here. We're dealing okay. with a lady of loose morals. Yeah. Oh, loose right. morals and big appetites, I think. Yeah. Raised on leather means she was going to a lot of rock shows and ad admiring rock stars. Yeah. She's yeah. a groupie. With mm -hmm. yeah. flesh on her mind. She wants that dick. <laughs> yeah. Words is weapons sharper than knives. Makes you wonder how the other half die. Is oh, the other half men? Uh, I suppose it could be, yeah. I mean, obviously it's a play on the on the old line. It makes you wonder how the other half lives. Or how yeah, yeah, I think, play. yeah. It's just people that aren't like you. Oh. What boring ways do they die? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Jeffrey, who works in accounting, how does he yeah. die? Okay. He, definitely not from autoerotic asphyxiation. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how accountants go out. <laughs> Unless they, you know, no, maybe. Is it too early to make light of that? No, no. not at all. No, okay, we're, we're going to get there. Uh, uh, he, he, I was surprised because I, I thought that. For, for some reason, I had it in my head that Michael Hutchins died more recently than he did. When I read that he died in, in 1997 when I was researching this, I'm like, it didn't square with me at all. Like, I had it in my brain. It was like 2007 or 2008. Were you confusing it with the death of the other beloved Australian Heath Ledger? Because sometimes, because I saw documentary things with each of their fathers, 
who mm -hmm. all, uh, Michael Hutchins' dad was really close to him, and so it was Heath Ledger's. It was really heartbreaking to see the dads right. talk, like bragging about their kid and then burst into tears. If you show me a dad crying, I'm, uh, yeah. that'll, that'll get me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they both, yeah, I, I think of those two having the same death, but yeah, it's 25 years apart. It's funny you say that. I saw a picture of Heath Ledger today and I was like, wow, dye his hair and he could have played in excess in a biopic. I mean, in yeah. Michael Hutchins easily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize how absolutely adorable Michael Hutchins was until I started watching documentaries and video clips of him. He's a he's he's a pretty man, so he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I looked up to him greatly. Yeah. <laughs> I I wonder this might sound kind of kind of silly, but with both Heath Ledger and and Michael Hutchins, and, and you're talking about their dads talking about them, you wonder if it's if it affects you more because you can imagine what it must be like for a son who, you know, wants to be an actor or wants to be a musician, and then you've got you know dad saying, "Hey, how about engineering? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, science. Get a real job. This is you know like, like doing the fatherly thing to encourage you to do something that's actually sensible." But then you Which have usually. Success. Yeah. yeah, that which usually makes those people successful. I, uh, I, from what I could see, it seemed like both their dads were pretty supportive. Yeah. So yeah. I admired that because my dad always was like into comedy and did radio and was saw why I was doing it and was supportive. So I, I think that added to me feeling bad when these guys died because. But yeah, most comics, you know, imagine John Mulaney's parents or something probably <laughs> wanted. Uh, him to be a doctor. I don't know why I'm calling him out. Just because he looks <laughs> like he'd be in law school. I don't yeah. know. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, John Mulaney, if you're watching. <laughs> he's not watching. Uh, but he's very funny. What was I saying? Sorry. <laughs> right. Your right. dad was a DJ. VJ. Yeah, yeah. 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 A yes, DJ. For MTV. MTV yeah, DJ. For, <laughs> yeah, 120 minutes. He, he was Matt Pinfield's makeup <laughs> artist. No, he was a, a radio when I was a little kid, but then he had kids and moved to Montana and I basically uh, destroyed his career, I now realize. Yeah, kids do that, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, was, he not, from, was he from Montana or did he? Yeah, did... yeah. And then I think went to Coronado uh, to do art school and then, I don't know. Yeah, a lot of it is foggy to me because I wasn't there yet. Um, yeah. but I was born in, <laughs> I was born in Monterey, but we left when I was like two and came back to Montana. Got it. Kind of like I've done. Yeah. It's come full circle. <laughs> it's come full circle yeah. now. Just no baby, you know. <laughs> Just shoot, a pandemic. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> pandemic and I'm shooting blanks. <laughs> you guys, uh, what I, hear the yeah, rest of those keep, lyrics? Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the face, something about the bells, something about Here, faces, something to the bells. Something like that. Here, Here comes, comes the, the man, man with the look in his eye, fed on nothing but full of pride. So this guy's got nothing. He's yeah. got nothing but his ego, right? Yeah. This is a, nothing but his ego and the look in his eye. A horny, <laughs> vapid man. Yeah, he sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> they seem made for each other. I hope they get together, these two losers. <laughs> Everybody's got a soulmate, and I think they're about to find each other. Yeah. Look at them go. Look at them kick. Makes you wonder how the other half live. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. We're wondering about that again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were yep. were we think, just wondering think... about the other half? Yeah. God. Keeps coming up. I think now we're jealous. Like, I think we were worried about the lady. Like, oh, oh that, that, that yeah. wild woman's going to die. But now she's found her Romeo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank God they found each other. They would have ruined two other people's lives. <laughs> <laughs> and listening to the song, the listener's like, yeah, the other half is us listening to you right. in this story. <laughs> yeah, I'm the sucker with an accounting job. <laughs> yes. So just reading the lyrics, this seems exactly how I would imagine a sexy rock god who dates models sees the world. Very sim yeah, yeah. simplistic, you know, women are all sexy, sharp-tongued vixens, and all men are just prideful and horny. And like, 
these are the only interactions Michael Hutchins is having in the world. So yeah. yeah. How do the rest of the dopes in the world live? This is all just cocaine yeah. and hot people. <laughs> yeah, I'm always having sex with perfect people. I wonder how the other half lives. Maybe I'll try <laughs> masturbating while choking myself. <laughs> sorry. I just keep I just keep doing it. I'm so sorry. It's Again, okay. Mr. Hutchins, if you're watching, senior father. <laughs> But really, that is the first thing I thought. I'm like, wait a minute. He didn't have to be doing that. Well, I I called up one of his lady friends. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, there's a, so I watched. Or fellas. Or fellas. I think Yay. he was open to things. Sure. Um, this is going to take a sad turn, but I did watch Mystify last night, the documentary about his life. And there was a big secret that he kept from the world of um, some brain damage that led him down that path. But we'll get to it. Let's get through these. Oh, stories. wow. Yeah. Ooh, we'll get to that story in a little bit. <clears throat> I also wonder if this if it's not just like this is how rock stars see the world, but it, like is this how all Australians see the world. <laughs> like, like, like they're just these crazy fit, perfectly tan beach bum, like this whole yeah. nation of sexy people. <laughs> yeah. like, they like, have no use for guns. Yeah. And they always have like these, they're granted like three months of vacation where Americans get like two weeks. And so um, I had a friend in the Peace Corps and he said everywhere he went, he met Australians because they're always on fucking vacation because they get so much of it. And he was having a conversation with one guy, like talking about generalizations between the two countries. Like, you know, uh, we see Australia, he was telling him, we see Australians as like fosters. And um, before he died, the Steve Irwin, you know, guy. Uh -huh. And he, he asked him, he's like, what do Australians think of Americans? And he said, Jerry Springer. And I was like, <laughs> he's right. <laughs> he nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Where's the lie? Yeah. But he said no, no one drinks Fosters in Australia. Yeah, that's not even available there, but they do look up to Steve Irwin. And it seems like they really pay attention to comedy. Yeah. So maybe he was doing a poll of like 70 year olds from Australia. <laughs> they just watched Springer, man. Is that still a show? How, who are they? Did you go to a rest home? Because <laughs> I'm you, the more I do podcasting and and uh, stand up hopefully is keeps being in a trajectory that I, a lot of people are from Australia. I'm like, I can, do I have to go there? There's yeah. so many comedy fans and goofy comics like Arge Barker are huge names there when here they were just kind of, oh, they're alternative or whatever. Right. Uh, so it makes me want to be there because I'm getting the impression they're all a bunch of savvy. Uh, rednecks know what i mean they're kind of rednecky just yeah. kidding in the I middle like a... just right in the middle <laughs> yeah 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 then they like they get they punch kangaroos and stuff <laughs> i think you do well there chris i think you should consider that i'd love it it's kind of expensive to go there but yeah uh there'd have to be a gig <clears throat> yeah remember those <laughs> oh. uh. What's the next layer? Is it about faces and bells? No, it's about the devil inside. The devil oh. inside. Every single, single one, one of us, us, the devil inside. Even Jeffrey in right. accounting. Even Jeffrey in accounting. <laughs> My girlfriend thought the lyric was, every single woman has the devil inside. Oh. oh. So she, yeah, she was really not pleased when, we were, when I told her that we were going to be doing this song. She's like, no. Oh, wow. it's, 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 yeah. I know wow, it changes that's everything. Interesting. Does she would, does she love him now? Is she over it? Eh, I, I I she was she wasn't around when I was doing the research, but I'm gonna mm -hmm. show him his big chocolate moony eyes and his curly floppy hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Show yeah, show some uh show mm -hmm. some old uh, player Shabu Shaba. <laughs> <laughs> There's some great they're good songs. They were a good band. Great band. Here come. Here come the world with the look in its eye. Future uncertain, but certainly slight. Uh, well, well, I think we all relate to that right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here you go, Chris. Look at the faces. Listen to the bells. It's hard, hard to, to believe we need a place. I need a place called hell? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of a difficult lyric because it sort of it sort of changes the like like it's it's hard to understand what he means. It's hard to believe we need a place called hell. Is he saying that 
like th this world is so wonderful, why would we invent hell? Or is he saying that this is all so terrible, why would we need to invent hell? Yeah, yeah, if, if, if uh, hell is on earth, why should it also be uh, underground in the lava? I forget yeah. what hell is. <laughs> Fire and brimstone it. in the middle of the world, I think, in the core. I yeah. And well, then, yeah, so when you're listening to the first part of the song, it sounds like he's celebrating this lifestyle. And this is the lyric where it shifts, where he's like, this is dark shit, like the, the way these people are living. You're like, yeah. oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it sucks to be raised by leather instead of two <laughs> human parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just yeah, prideful almost, horniness. <laughs> yeah, but speaking of prideful horniness, it almost feels like he can, he can smell the end coming, doesn't <laughs> it? Like, I know. Oh it's, yeah, that was an awful lot of doom saying sort of in that one. Yeah, it's a lot of foreshadowing. I didn't realize how big In Excess was. Like I thought that they were an, an '80s band that had a great. I thought Kick was just a like a really big album that had three or four big singles on it. I didn't realize that that you could make a case that they were clearly the biggest band in the world for about three or four years. Yeah, yeah. I, I Kick definitely was the big one where everyone learned about them, and I. I was like, oh, my sister's been playing me in excess since fourth grade. <laughs> that, came, that came out when I was like in sixth or seventh grade. And there was a psycho stick vision skateboard, like a current skateboard that out of the 10 everyone wanted, that was one of them. But my, whoever, whatever model or band member is standing on it, his front foot, which is a combat boot covered foot, is like, go, sticking straight out and toes forward like Egyptian style <laughs> and, the, and the foot is coming off the board that much. It's like, oh, that's a terrible stance. <laughs> it's like they took a picture of him as he was falling in the photography <laughs> studio and just tilted the feet. But that's really I, funny. And they're skateboarding in this music video. There's like uh, Steve Saez and these other skaters were like skating a bench. Uh, and I thought that was so cool. I'd never seen skateboarding uh, in a music video, and then you know it was on Tom Petty's uh, Free Fallen video. I was like, "Wait, skateboarding is coming, becoming mainstream." Little did I know, yeah, it would be in the Olympics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it was. I that's oddly why I really liked In Excess is because they had skateboarding in that video. I didn't nice. know yeah. it was about such darkness. Yeah. <laughs> Was this the so first were, song that got you into In Excess, you think? Or no, you were listening to it since you were in fourth grade, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had tapes that my sister would record and give me tapes of what I should be listening to. That's awesome. Uh, even if she wasn't, like if she was listening to uh, Big Audio Dynamite and Public Image Limited, she would give me tapes of uh, you know, The Clash and The Sex Pistols. It was too hard sounding for her but she she was like you're a skateboarder you're yeah i was real lucky that she kind of curated my that's great music I, which kind of leads all into all that. my my guilty pleasure stuff you know nice it's all sister given like cocteau twins and stuff like that if, if all my friends I almost were listening, wore that shirt on this podcast yeah. i have a oh, I lo i've been song. listening to him a lot lately it's not a guilty pleasure it's more like a pride that i have because everyone else was listening to warrant and yeah and Bon Jovi, and I'm like, this is dog shit. Well, now I like, now I like some of that <laughs> uh, rock. I'm like, why do I have every Bon Jovi song memorized? Exactly. Uh, I guess I was listening. I was just like, let's play The Cure. And everyone would be like, no. Right, you fit right uh, into us. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah, I, I my sister, I had a six, six years old, she was six years older, and and uh, a woman, my sister was a woman. <laughs> so I, uh, I, yeah, that's not the music taste my friends had, but now I'm pretty thankful for it. Yeah, for sure. I had the same thing. Uh, my friend, I don't have siblings, but my friend's big sister did hand me down tapes the same way, would make playlists for us and give it to us. Mm. And that's where the first time I heard Big Audio Dynamite. Yeah. It's really funny you say that. Yeah, yeah, she gave me that and Yaz or something. I'm like, I don't like Yaz. I don't like that voice. I can't tell what that person looks like. But now I, <laughs> I can listen to Yaz now, you know. Some of it I would reject, but. Uh, I thought Alison Moyer was a man for years. Me too. Uh, I no. think everyone did. Yeah. I think everyone did. 
Yeah. Until you read that the name is Allison back then, it pretty much was a giveaway. But, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, all that, all this Costello, all that stuff, I wouldn't have known about any of it. Yeah. I all feel right. bad. I, 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 have, I have a younger sister and a younger brother, and I was not the cool older brother. Like, oh. I, I, didn't, I didn't teach them anything. I taught them dorky stuff. Nice. <laughs> like, I, like I made my little brother be in like a kid's performance of Alice in Wonderland and dumb shit like that. I, I didn't, I did not help him socially in the world at all. <laughs> well, that's the thing that neither did this music my sister gave me, but I bet later on in retrospect, he'll be glad you made him do that <laughs> stupid ass play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, uh, I wasn't, I don't know, maybe I wanted my sister to show me, I would hear it in her room downstairs. And I was like, that, I like that. So yeah. I think it set I us up interested. for a cooler friend group. You know what I mean? Like, cause you found the mm -hmm. other people that liked it. And I don't oh, know. totally. Yeah. yeah. I knew the guys that were cool that had eyeliner, but still had a Raiders hat and would get into fights. <laughs> a lot of confused <laughs> melding of groups. These uh, cure, like you know, these cure gangsters, these <laughs> wannabe cure gangsters, they existed in Missoula. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It was a whole thing. Raiders the National Guard. Let's wipe them off the streets. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was also a time where it's like I like the Cure, and I also like NWA, and I'm I and that was our so age gonna, group. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was all coming at us at once. All right, should we finish out this song and then talk some more NXS? Yeah, let's hear more depressing lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the end of the song. That's the, that's the last oh, I have. Oh, well, there's, that. here comes the woman. Look, oh, yeah, he just repeats this first verse again. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, yeah. So, um, God, what was a little bit I was going to say about the song? I wanted to talk about the guitar riff because I remember watching, it was one of those VH1 countdowns. And I don't know if it was like top 100 rock songs or top, 100 guitar riffs it was one of those but i don't know if you would consider in excess like new wave or pop but i specifically remember they put this song in the list pretty high like pretty like maybe in the 30s um and i remember d snyder saying it was undeniable it's just like one of the best guitar riffs in rock music oh wow yeah i was like surprised yeah yeah that he would choose that out of every other I mean, Metal I think band. you've done these like list shows, I think. I mean, do they force you to talk about every single song or every single subject? No, you can pick. Okay. Yeah, you can pick because uh, I have, it's like, where were you when you first started watching Saved by the Bell? I'm like, I was outside. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so you get a pick. Yeah. Okay. There's a well, lot yeah. of pop culture stuff. It's, well, that's interesting that D. Snyder was checked into in excess. Then that's good to know. Yeah, find. I went. I went and saw Dinosaur Junior. at There was a festival that had comedians in it, and we were able to uncomfortably hang out on the stage, which was weird. It's like I don't want people to see me watching a band, <laughs> but I was really surprised to see Henry Rollins, who used to be like, uh, you know, such a shit talker and like you know, at the forefront of whatever, post-punk, whatever you want to call. Right. Uh, I guess, uh, punk. Uh, but he was so into Dinosaur Jr. He oh. was like mouthing along to the guitar. I was like, man, this guy's really into, I just didn't expect that. Right, it's uh, always cool to reason. see that. Like I love yeah. when Marilyn Manson did that whole album of covers and it was all new wave songs. Like it was all, yeah, yeah. But I was like, sure. oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'll listen to this version of your crappy music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he's uh, he's funny. I like him. I don't like the music. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the but music. My guilty, my them. guilty pleasure is more embarrassing. So. Oh, I can't wait <laughs> when they get to that. <laughs> it's well, not it's so much. Like it's, it's it, I don't particularly like Marilyn Manson's music, but it's also the pose that I don't like either. Like I, like it's the, yeah. like I'm the most evil thing you've ever seen. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just seems yeah. like there's, there's a there's a lack of creativity there that bothers. Me. Totally, I wanted more from it. Like I, because the music I liked, it sounded yeah. like 
industrial ministry type stuff. And then right. he's just like, oh. kind of talk singing. And yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, what? I don't know. Eyebrows. One weird <laughs> eye. <laughs> <laughs> It's too distracting. Be the Beautiful People was so good. I remember my mom bought the cassette single. Like, it was so good, it reached my mother, who liked country yeah. music. I mean, I was like, it was a jam. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think I it's, it's another song that I would like now, but yeah. didn't, like, like, I used to hate that Prodigy song that, I am a fire starter. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I was like, turn that off. And it came on the other day. I was like, that, I like this now. <laughs> this and there's is no true. part of me doesn't, doesn't not like this. Yeah. So Our misheard weird. song lyric last week was Prodigy's uh, Smack My Bitch Up. And the girl thought he was saying, Snap My Picture. <laughs> oh, I always thought it was, Take My Picture. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> there maybe is a radio play version. On oh. That. You might look into that. Uh... It's Ooh, that's uh, interesting. Point. Let's get it started in here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, we all heard you guys say the R word. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, Black Eyed Peas. I'm calling you out. Calling you Free out. Free Fergie. <laughs> Cancel Fergie. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's talk about the video. Did you guys watch the video? Did you go back? And I did. Yeah, it's full of '80s badassery. Oh yeah. So it was. <laughs> Filmed by Joel Schumacher, who did like St. Elmo's Fire and The Lost Boys. And there's a funny connection because uh, NXS with this guy named Jimmy Barnes did two songs for The Lost Boys for Joel Schumacher. And so as repayment, he shot their video in Balboa, oh, California. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and That's it looks, cool. It looks, and it's meant to look like the same look and feel as the Lost Boys, and it does. Yeah. It's very, like, dark. That's great. Yeah, I remembered that's one of the reasons I like the Lost Boys, is how cool it was. Like, Corey Haim's like, I want that shirt. I have that same Swatch watch. And then right. you hear NXS in the background. The funniest part of that where it, that just stands out like crazy to me is in that movie where they're watching outdoor concert, and he first sees Star... And the act they're watching is this muscle-bound guy <laughs> playing saxophone. I still believe. I still believe. <laughs> he does and, his hips. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, where'd they get that model? No, that guy still tours, and he's older now and still ripped, and he wow. does rock and roll saxophone, and you can see him pre-COVID. Oh, uh, my God. I mean, it's really funny. It was like... And of course, the more I read into it, that was the the SNL sketch where John Hamm is playing saxophone and all that. It was all based on this guy. Nice. Or admittedly, the SNL writers were saying that I'm, it's just that was a real guy. Oh my but god! But when you watch that movie, it's like most of it holds up. I uh, as far as style and everything, but right. that sweaty, <laughs> muscular saxophone rocker. Like oh that <laughs> saxophone that doesn't that happens a lot with saxophone it just doesn't you don't hear saxophone riffs no. in popular music anymore. No, Let's see, I love sweaty it. muscular saxophone rocker. I gotta update my Tinder profile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, just those words together. It's like <laughs> you threw them at a dartboard of awesome things. <laughs> my friend Stephanie is dating, you know, she's in her 40s and she's divorced. And every day she sends me a snapshot of some guy that she's been like teamed up with. And it's always like, she's like, I'm gonna die alone. <laughs> like it's always oh, yeah. saxophone <laughs> rocker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I've, yeah, I've never uh, in person met anyone, but I'm on there and I just, just for the gratification of like, oh, I matched with someone. Now this has gotten horrifying and I never <laughs> answer and they don't either. It's just a video game right. where you <laughs> right. uncomfortably judge people based on four photos. But I totally have a ridiculous profile of course you should like make sure someone sees the sarcasm right and then if they're like ha 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 i'm like okay you know i'm not a muscular <laughs> rock and roll sex <laughs> uh it's gotta be a fourth word there yeah Bo -hunk. <laughs> Bo -hunk. Uh, but yeah yeah man it's i yeah. work with a with a woman who was showing me her profile once and she, she just goes ben let me show you my file of men standing on rocks posing with dead fish <laughs> oh wow totally <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. gotta be big in Montana too. 
Oh, it's yeah, women uh, with fish that <laughs> were raised by their brothers or wolves. But there's yeah, a <laughs> lot of outdoorsy, a lot of holding up bloody heads. I mean, that's where I grew up around that. It yeah. just wasn't in my immediate family or any of my friends, really. Right. I'm realizing, hanging out with all of them again. None of them kill anything. No. Or torture fish. I mean, if you're listening to The Cure and skateboarding, you don't have time. Yeah, yeah, to go wake up early and hang out in a treetop with a weird <laughs> uncle and a flask of whiskey. <laughs> Why is there always a stack of Playboy in the corner of their deer stand? Anyway, I went with my dad's friends way too much. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, move, we'll move on from that part. Um, all right. So I'm going to give a little bit of history just because I watched Mystify last night. And it took me down a really sad path where I was like, fuck, I didn't know. Because before I watched the show, I was going to talk some shit about Michael Hutchins, just about how he just wanted too much. Like you could tell he was just kind of greedy with like all of his senses. Like he just wanted to taste all the stuff, do all the drugs, fuck all the models. And um, he was, he, he did have like a, a raging curiosity for life and everything. But so when he was dating model Helena, Helena Christensen, whatever, the girl from the Chris Isaacs video, Yep. She said they were riding their bike and they stopped to get a slice of pizza and he was standing in the middle of the road eating his pizza and a cab driver got pissed off at him for being in the middle of the road and punched him and like knocked his head into a curb really bad. And she said that's Australian was, for hello. <laughs> I think they were I think they were in Paris at the time. <laughs> But she said she thought he was dead. He was bleeding out of his mu his mouth and his ears. And they took him to the hospital. Wow. And he came to in the hospital. But obviously, he had a massive concussion. And he just got really violent, like really violent in the hospital. And he wouldn't stay in. And they let him go. They just let him go. Like a oh, very wow. obviously concussed person. Because that's what you do when you have a concussion. Like you just lose it. So he went back home to their apartment for like a month and was just like real violent, not the same. Uh, he wouldn't eat. Eventually went back to a hospital and got a brain scan and it shows pictures of his brain. And it was like separated and all these nerves were not connected anymore. Oh no. And he no longer had a sense of smell or taste and he would never get it back. And so his neurologist- it gave him COVID? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh, so many people have that now. <laughs> yeah, that I've heard the smell and taste thing. Uh, man, it is the worst. If you get, that's why it's so dangerous to sucker punch someone or get in fights at all. If you knock someone out and they're unconscious and fall, that is dead weight. That, so many people die that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Chuck almost died that way. He's getting better and better, but I don't think he can smell or taste either. It's like so scary to be, uh, if you put not someone out, they will just, you're going to possibly kill them. Yeah. You're supposed to just feed them the boots or stab them. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> but punching people is dangerous. Yeah. So stab was, them like a gentleman. Exactly. Yeah, in the leg. Yeah, <laughs> or like on that show alone where they take the fish and they like, or they take the little bird and they just snap the net. You just end the suffering immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't let them live without a sense of smell or taste. So right. <laughs> his neurologist, I, this was crazy, said, your sense of smell is tied to the part of the brain that processes emotions and association. So when you lose that, you start to slowly lose your sense of self, like you're floating in outer space. You can see everything happening, but you're disconnected from it. And so from a man who was so connected to his senses and lived by all of them, this completely wrecked his personality. And wow. uh, he started just needing more danger in his life, his bandmate said, like more drugs, more anything, I think, to feel the world again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Harder mm -hmm. drugs. Which eventually, I mean, then his life got crazy. Like they broke up and he met Paula Yates who was getting a divorce or who got a divorce from Bob Geldof then. And then- Did you see the interview where, where he and Paula Yates met? Yeah, and she's like sitting on him in the bed. Yeah, the, about that it's, one? It's a, it's, yeah it's, it's a show on, the, on, on English TV called The Big Breakfast or something like that. And it's, it looks like it's some kind of like variety interview celebrity show. 
and Michael Hutchins and Polly Yates are, are lying on a, on a bed and it looks like, you know, like a 16 year old girl's bed and their legs are all intertwined. Like it looks for all the world, yeah, like, they, other than the fact that they're clothed, it looks like they've just made love and yeah. now they're well, having a conversation. And it's like, like, and that conversation is exactly, they're talking about, like, like, like he used to date it was Helene Christensen, but he also dated Natasha Kinski, I think. Oh, he dated which, um, Kylie Minogue. Yeah. So she's, oh. she's asking him, you know, about his, about his past lovers and how he, and they're, they're looking into each other's eyes. Oh, and, it looks like they're he, about wow. to fucking go down on each other on national TV. Wow. And it's apparently like they did half an hour later. Play. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Exactly like that. It was really, really weird to see because like he ended up, I don't think they ever got married, but she had children with, with her husband, Bob Geldof. And as a custody like she wanted to take the kids to Australia to visit Michael Hutchins the night that he died. That was the plan. But there was a custody battle going on in London where Bob Geldof had basically sued to say, you can't take my kids to Australia. Well, they had oh, found man. heroin in the house and uh, mm -hmm. like the nanny had found heroin in the house, which was probably both him and Polly Yates. And Bob Geldof is like, fuck that. I don't want my kids in that house. And it was just a fucking mess. And then like Michael was, kind of seeing this other really young girl back and forth at the time. And she's the one that made the call of like, um, I think he's done something. He, she was always afraid he was going to kill himself because he talked about it all the time. But wow. I think, he yeah, ended I up always just thought he was a wholesome guy. Cause I had just only seen this thing with his dad and his, his dad would seem so connected and, right. and liked him so much. I'm like, Oh, he's probably a nice guy, but I didn't know about any of his, yeah, Rock there's even more crazy lifestyle. stuff with his family. Like his parents divorced and his mom came home out of the blue one day and took him to America and left his brother in Australia. I mean, just left and the dad wasn't was like in China. And so his younger brother went through like seven different nannies. One died of a heroin overdose while she was watching him. Like his brother had issues and they uh Michael always felt guilty for leaving him and then watching his brother spiral and always felt guilt and like, you know, loved his brother a lot, but felt bad for leaving. Wow. Yeah, it was, it's a rough, kind of a rough childhood, but they, on the documentary, they speak very fondly of his dad. Like everyone loved his dad. He had a really fantastic dad. Yes, that I will speak fondly of his father. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> But, okay, one more thing I want to talk about, because I did not see this. Did you guys know about the, there was a, an award where um, Oasis won, like, Best New Video, and Michael Hutchins in NXS was presenting the award, and uh, Michael kissed uh, Noel Gall Gallagher on the cheek and gave him the award, and Noel uh, lifted up the award and said, has-beens shouldn't be presenting awards to gun uh, gunnabees. <laughs> dick and you can yeah see weird walked away and michael hutchins was just kind of like all right like i don't know so apparently and i have to go back and listen to the song on the song elegantly wasted uh, which is supposed to be a song about michael hutchins uh getting really drunk with bono because they were good friends there's a lyric where in the background it says like ah elegantly wasted but when he recorded his background vo vocals he says i'm better than oasis i don't know if that's, uh, that's funny <laughs> <laughs> that's great that so, sounds like a made up thing but it does why not yeah no everyone i mean there i it and it affected me ever liking an oasis song sometimes i'm surprised on some brit pop compilation on Spotify, I'll like some Oasis, but those guys are such famous dicks that I'm like, I, that's enough for me not to listen to the music, you know? Yeah. I'm actually an Oasis fan. And then I've never been a fan of like how much dicks they are in person, but I, I really liked Don't Look Back in Anger. But um, as soon as I saw that, I was like, fuck that guy. Like I'm done yeah. with Oasis. Like what a <laughs> shit move. What was he thinking? Why? Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. Weird. Just to make waves, I guess, or be memorable. I guess so. But you know, no one gives a shit about Oasis now. So. Yeah. yeah. If I was Australian, I would definitely have a pet crocodile that I would feed people to anytime they bothered me. Like anytime I get my feelings hurt, like just get him, get him, Tomber. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd have to 
make that double hatch door in your living room and <laughs> invite people in. And was that yeah. romancing the stone? Have a hidden lever. <laughs> oh yeah, and romancing the stone. That used to freak me out. Yeah. Guy they had this door hand. and it went down yeah. to the like pit of crocodiles. Yeah, look at those <laughs> choppers. <laughs> <would ya? laughs> Yeah. My girlfriend's from Colombia, and when we first got together, I made her watch *Romancing the Stone* with me. <laughs> and it was like, oh, it was like great. the first time that she understood, like, oh, this is why everybody asked me if I rode a donkey to school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I don't have a truck. Oh, you mean my little mule, Pepe? Yeah, I watched that movie a lot. I was way into it. <laughs> so I good. really liked it. Yeah. Oh, I loved it when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. it was that the whole best. scene where that scene where the tr reveal of the truck and there's that chase through town. I was like, it was for some <laughs> reason the coolest thing. I don't. <laughs> Guys, don't you agree that everyone who didn't grow up watching movies in the eighties just fucking missed out? I mean, yeah, so good, so so good. I love when I meet young people that have that know that and they've watched them all. I'm always surprised by that. Like, there's I a lot of young people that will go back and really. Oh, I've I, seen Fletch and Arthur. I'm like, what? You're in your 20s. That's amazing. Good job. I have the opposite. I have this group of friends who are like 10 years younger than me, and they've never seen, they didn't know who Digital Underground was. They'd never even heard of the Humpty Dance, and they had never. Oh, seen that's surprising. The Humpty right. Dance part. <laughs> They had never seen Stand By Me. And I was like, go home right now. Like, you have to yeah. go watch that. Did you know Tupac was in the background during Stand By Me? No. No, I'm just kidding. I can't <laughs> Tupac. Tupac was in that digital underground, though. He was just like a backup dancer. And you That's can awesome. see him. And it's like, wait a minute. That was a bigger <laughs> star than any of these guys. And he was wow. just eager showing up. Or eager, I don't know. He went to Juilliard, I think. He was like a trained actor right. guy. But. My friend Tammy's ex-fiance was a backup dancer for Vanilla Ice on tour. Oh, wow. What a what? terrible summer. Wow. <laughs> that was Too my- Too cold. I don't know if I've said this. Oh, I have said it on the podcast. Um, against my will, uh, Vanilla Ice was the first concert I ever saw. Uh, oh, that's- uh, Isn't that horrible? Extremely notable, yeah. It, it was my friend on my softball team. Her, she was going with another friend, and that friend dropped out. My dad got a phone call because we were friends with their parents. He was like, "Get dressed, you're going to see Vanilla Ice." I was like, "What? No, I had like your posters, you know." <laughs> wow, yeah. But, God uh, damn it, Dad! What did I ever do to you? Yeah, but at the That's same time, crazy. I was like, "Well, I've never been to a concert. It was at the Summit, you know, where the Rockets played." And I remember walking in, and I think it was like Rex and Effects or something was the opener, and it was yeah, Shake Baby, Shake Baby one, yeah. Two. And yeah. it was like these girls, like on these guys, like riding them, like it was, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like, "Oh my god!" This is yeah. I'm a grown up. I'm seeing. I'd watch stuff. Rex and Effects. <laughs> Yeah, my there was a in Missoula, Montana, uh, the Beastie Boys and Fishbone did a concert, and it was on my birthday, and I really wanted to go, but I was, yeah, it's like in fifth grade, I couldn't go. So in my mind, that was my first concert, and I don't remember what my actual first concert was. I remember. I want to say Screaming Trees, or They Might Be Giants, or see, you're just gonna have a cool one. Uh, I, I don't remember. remember. Yeah, I don't. Or was it Nitty Gritty Dirt Band? I don't, there's shows that you see when you're a little kid. Do I have to ca count that? Right. A live concert free in the park? Right. You know? <laughs> right. Well, Corbett yeah. has the best story. His first concert as a tiny little kid was the Rolling Stones, and he went with the Banditos, like this big, like, bicycle, oh, yeah. motorcycle gang that hit one Bicycle gang. Bicycle. <laughs> one of his like friends dads was a bandito and like so these two little boys are just surrounded by a bice uh, bicycle gang again motorcycle <laughs> gang and um it's the first time like weed was being passed over him all this shit where i was like all right all right you have the best first concert story <laughs> i thought you were gonna say he was at the i think it was hell's angels but there was that oh. concert where the hell's angels started murdering people right yeah <laughs> they're bad dudes all right are we done with devil inside are we gonna move on to our um oh shit. well i think we gotta ask the, the tough question i think we need to take what? a poll do you think that michael hutchins died 
of autoerotic asphyxiation. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do. I do, yeah. Because yeah. he didn't hang himself from up high, and the way people usually die of that is, like, sitting down, like, with a doorknob. It just seems yeah. like yeah. that's how they do that. That's And true. I think it's in, uh, that's half of it, uh, that you're looking for that high that no one, <laughs> where your endorphins are firing because you're dying, I guess? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so may, yeah. Dying is definitely part of the, it's like, Hey, I also might die. So that's a pretty cool drug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like bungee jumping or. He yeah, wanted to you know. die doing the thing he loved, which was coming, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Exciting thing you could, why would you, I can't understand, like, I can't understand hanging yourself because I can't, why would you take off, why would you be naked to commit suicide? Right. You're um, saying it was a. Uh, that's some Straight kind of hanging. a murder. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we've looked deep enough into this. I think You're it was right. kangaroo murder. Yeah, he got wine stained. <laughs> or I mean, uh, whatever, Jeff, I forget. I forget his name. I don't think about the guy. Jeffrey. Yeah. Epstein. Epstein. There you go. Oh, yeah. All right. So I think uh, confusing those two names is probably a form of racism. No, no. I apologize to any Steens out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do our Dressed Up Like a Douche this week. It comes from Corbin Gallagher. This is actually a really funny one. Um, the ACDC song, Highway to Hell, he yells out, Hey, Satan, paid my dues. And Corbin always thought he said, Hey, Satan, hey there, Jews. <laughs> Oh, he was like, whoa, yeah. really? I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> he always just thought, like, it's so weird that everybody let him get away with that. <laughs> it's funny, though, because that's the only, it's, it's uh, Jewish people call themselves Jews, too. It's like the racist thing that people yell, and then also like, hey, we're Jews. I'm like, don't say that. Oh, you're, oh, okay. You can, there's yeah. like no other. Because it's no always other... hard to tell a Jew. You never know. A Jewish person, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say Jew, uh, a Jewish person <laughs> until they tell you right. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It is, uh, yeah. It's it's always been uh, interesting to me. So I don't, I, I don't think of it as a bad word, but I guess it is. Depends on the tone, your cadence. Yeah. Your, your volume. Yeah. And, and your nationality. Intense. Yeah. If you're and whether or not you're in the streets in Germany or... <laughs> you know. That's a good point. The time period. There's a lot of factors. It's the ish. It's like, if you, oh, you're a Jew. Like, oh, that's a problem. Oh, you're Jewish. Ah, right. Oh, that's a nice soft. Yeah. <laughs> Just two different reactions. Yeah. That's great. All right, let's get into guilty pleasures. Ben, do you have a guilty pleasure song? It must have been love, but it's love. Love. Roxette. Little Roxette. Yeah. I would throw all of Roxette into and, and true guilty pleasure. Not just like roll out the window or I'm embarrassed by how I use it. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a straight up, I love, it, it feels so good to say, I love Roxette. Yeah. And I'm Dude. embarrassed about it. You can be an adult. You can hold those two competing thoughts in your head at the same time. Didn't she just die? She did. Yes, she did. Recently, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Her and Dolores from Cranberries. Yeah, a it's a movie. really bad time. Yeah. Well, you know, we're getting older. <laughs> it's just going to be happening. Died. Yeah, <laughs> We just sound like my dad did when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, everyone dies around this guy. Yeah, I know. Just, you know more people or of more people. and mm -hmm. They were it's always like dying. It's, yeah. it's the seasons of your life, too. Like, like people die in their 20s because you're dumb and you're doing reckless crap. And then you die in your, your 70s and 80s because you're old. But you also die in your 40s because you've just beaten yourself to death for 25 years by yeah. then. Like, if you're smoking cigarettes, doing drugs, and drinking every day, your, yeah, meat, yeah. your meat vehicle just wears out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Meat vehicle. laughs> I think that's a good one. Uh, I guess I'll do my next and then do Chris. Uh, mine is, it's, it's a real, like, I feel bad about it. Just like my Mickey Avalon last week, I feel dirty and bad about this one. It's uh, Crazy Bitch by Buck Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever I, tell you my story about that song? No. That's all right, I don't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. 
I, I'm, I'm going to do it. I, I worked uh, for a construction company and I had an office that was right off of this conference room that we would rent out to the other people who had offices in that building. And it was a lot of lawyers. And one of the lawyers was a, a divorce mediator. So I'd have to keep my office door open because I was like the building manager. So people, whatever. Uh, so I'm sitting in my office all day and I'm listening to this divorce mediation where the, this couple is like literally having the argument of their life about their kids, about their assets, about everything. And it's heated and it's ugly and it's terrible. And then in the middle of that meeting, the guy's phone goes off and his novelty phone ring is, you're crazy, bitch, but you look so good, I'm on top of it. I, oh, wow. Like, I fled my own office. I was laughing my fucking ass off. Like, Wonderful timing. In the middle of your divorce mediation. That's so funny. I have no reason Perfect. to like this song. I feel like it is the anthem song of a woman who smokes too much and has tattoos all over her titties and she's real proud of it. Not anything against all the women with tattoos on your titties. I just think this is your theme song and it's not mine. I shouldn't yeah, like yeah. it. But um, Buck Cherry's gross to me. I, do, I don't think I like any of his other songs, but when it comes I've on- I've never, I have no idea. I've heard the- those words together and they are like moist panties or all those words that I, buck cherry. I don't care if it's great. I don't want to hear those words together again. I've never, <laughs> yeah. I don't know the song you guys are talking about. I really. You should write it down. It's basically, uh, he's got a very raspy voice. He's very skinny and rock, like rock star. And it's out, oh, y'all crazy bitch, but you fuck so good. I'm on top of it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, I wouldn't like it. No, I don't need to no, you it up. No. <laughs> There's something about the the musical aspect of it that I, it's, I literally roll my windows up and then shamefully kind of turn it up and be like, it's kind of <laughs> What year is it from? Like early 2000s or something? 90s, so? is it? Late 90s, early 2000s? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's late late 90s, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Not, it's not good. It's not good. That's no, no. I'm very guilty. I think that my friend uh, that I, when I was leaving Austin and stayed with a friend that I worked in a t-shirt shop with, a, a good friend of mine now, but he he was in all these like punk bands in Vegas and he was like a punk rock guy, but he did have that album and he was saying it was good. And I remember the skinny guy with like a cowboy hat and some kind of belt. I remember the skinny guy. Yeah. And I never, uh, yeah. never listened to it. I just stayed in my room. Well, if we want to stay friends with me, you don't have to listen to it. I need, I need your right, right. <laughs> All no, right, mine, yeah. What's your? I mean, mine, pleasure? mine's not an. I didn't. I thought maybe we were gonna get to play them, so mine is uh, worthless in saying it because it's a brand new song. So oh, well, no one will anyway. know it. So I'll just say that the one that I always use, which I always like, that UB40 Red Red Wine song. Oh, yeah. Even though you only yeah. hear it on cruise ships, and I don't like. <laughs> I don't like reggae at all, except for like that one Bob Marley legend album, of course. Right. All those are great songs. They're like pop songs. But uh, that Red Red Wine <laughs> song puts me in a good mood. Even the <laughs> Neil Diamond one. I just always, and it always comes on when you're in a, uh, you know, on a shitty cruise ship or something. <laughs> I was gonna say it comes like up when you did yeah. pick me up. Like, I don't know, there's something yeah. about that. But up, like the beginning of it, and then red, red, what? And you're just like, yeah, All right. uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy. That's another one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was. But no, there's a new, that. there's a new Mr. Bungle song that. Oh, it's like nice. Mike Patton from Faith No More's, uh, band that used to have horns, and some guy John Zorn that's like this crazy jazz guy did a lot of the music on the very first album, and I liked it. It was like satanic, but there's horns in it. Not ska music, but just horn metal. Okay. With all these 666 references, and I felt real like I was right. uh, listening to scary music. But now, you know, he's a grown man, and he's, his voice is still this crazy seven octave. Mike like, Patton's he's got seven incredible. octaves, like, like uh, Mariah Carey. Or, yeah. People don't realize uh, but, what a good singer he was. Or oh, is. it's in... It's just his vocal ability. Like that, that movie, I Am Legend, he's all the monsters in it. Like he does all these crazy things with his voice where he has like gets voiceover work. Yeah. But the new Mr. Bungle song, which has the worst, my guilty pl pleasure is, I'm the guilty part is that the, t the name of the song is so horrid. I don't even want to say 
You should say what it so is. We have a Spotify playlist that we put all these songs on, and I want it to be a part of it. So you have to tell it. It is a fun, very fast speed metal. It's song called raping your mind <laughs> nice. <All right. laughs> uh, but the song is like i can't believe it's just i scott ian from anthrax his guitar is in there like it's like another super group like mike Patton just right as this guy from ministry or slayer or or uh the melvins or whatever he's all these projects with like super groups but whatever group is now mr bungle is Okay. really good i'll check that and, out uh, and that band's old they were around before he was in faith no more it's like right. some of those guys are probably old buddies That's but great. that song it rule i've been listening to it and it's like speed metal and even my friends are like this is this is too hard and fast no and i love it <laughs> no i still go back to i think i don't like the hard stuff and then i go back to and listen to like ministry like um psalm 69 and all of those like really hard songs and i'm like man this still gets me this is still really good yeah it's weird though ministry was like like that with sympathy album is all like new wave oh, and yeah. then all of a sudden they're industrial the scary switch, music the switch they just makes from a fake british accent to do yeah yeah really industrial like almost death metal is the funniest yeah. break i've ever seen yeah just let's switch genres anyone have a problem with that <laughs> no no just, let's do a 180 it'll be fun <laughs> all right <laughs> but i like both <laughs> yeah me too i do too yeah Oh God, I love that. I love that he faked a British accent. Yeah. Especially that, <laughs> um -ba, um -ba, um -ba, that every day is Halloween song. Oh, it's so good. That's great. Uh, okay, I think we have covered Devil Inside. Chris, I want to do some promotions. Most of all, uh, you guys, everybody needs to go watch Rescue Cactus, your latest special. Where is it yeah. on Amazon now? It is. It's it's like four bucks on Amazon. I thought it was on Amazon Prime, and I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to make my money back. But uh, <laughs> you can get it on at Chris Fairbanks Comedy Special dot com or Rescue Cactus dot com. Great. Or find it on Amazon as of a couple days ago. Awesome. Which hopefully more strangers will watch it. But yeah, uh, it's about to be paid for, which is great. That's great. It's so I funny. just had to pay the guy off with the proceeds. Uh, oh, really? the, my friend that shot it all and mm -hmm. pitched the idea of even doing my own special. I, I, it was something I had to be talked into and I'm really glad he did because I, it ended up really, it ended up what I wanted and more. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. That's because I That's can't even watch. Thing. I've never watched. I've watched clips of it, but I can't watch myself. No one can. can. I'm it. sure Ben's no. that way. No. You like nope. who yeah. watch, and I can't watch the ending, but people like it. So yeah, I, that I can say. It's very. And good. I hate my comedy. I I am <laughs> very hard on myself. You've seen it. And I felt you really good about be. this. I know you're it's good. so ridiculous. Thanks. You're fantastic. Every time we well, hang you've out seen me and... like something doesn't go right or an audience isn't right, and I get mad and I beat myself up. You saw me do it in somewhere in oh, Houston. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I just want to leave now and go to the hotel. I don't even. It, it's something about it. And it's, it's so crazy it's, because yeah. I saw your show and I was like, Chris, it was great. What the fuck are you talking about? What are you it's, doing? I will watch. Uh, you know, if they're taped, I rarely record. I should, but I don't. But I will watch. There is no difference between the sets where I'm like, oh, that was really good. Let me watch it. And I'm like, yeah, it was okay. And then I watch one where I thought I ate shit. And I'm like, this isn't bad at all. It's always the same. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> I'm crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but it or I, out. I, I can't, if an audience is not enjoying me, that's all I'm noticing i can't i have a real hard time separating that but that's the drive um, that makes you a great comedian is, is it like that feeling that i'm not doing good enough even when you're doing great is what makes you so much better well thanks i i i really i ha it has to be perfect and i thought it would wear off i you see these comics they're like ah it could have been better whatever let's go and i'm like wait you don't want to lay in the fetal position you must be healthier <laughs> than me <laughs> but yeah, I always 
How long has it been it since you've cried in the shower at the Motel 6? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just running, trying to make it to the shower in time, crying in the hallway <laughs> outside the Motel 6. Yeah, I'm sitting here trying to tell you it's fine. And the last time I did stand up was right before I got pregnant with Charlie and I had a panic attack on stage. And I was like, I'm done. I'm just not going to do this anymore. <laughs> I like that your name right now is Charlie. Yeah, he started You're using. <laughs> oh, for school. He, for school. This is a Zoom for school. Okay. Yeah, I had to. I was like, I'm not yeah. going to put Rock the Cash Bar on his school Zoom. <laughs> oh, that's the funny thing about my Mr. Bungle song is I sent it to my friend who likes music and he's in bands. And I'm like, wow, listen to this. And he's like, uh, yeah, my son was holding my phone. I'm really glad <laughs> I grabbed it from him before. And I'm like, come on, it's just a metal song. He's in, he's like, and then I realized the song was called Raping Your Mind. I'm like, oh, that, yeah, you probably don't want your nine-year-old reading that word. I got yeah. you. Yeah, and you, know, as a parent, they're so inquisitive, like, what does this mean? And you're like, uh, yeah. uh I don't want to. That's exactly it. what he said. He said, it's just a conversation I don't want to have. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, sorry, I sent you pornographic music. Music. Big deal. <laughs> well, also, Chris has a very popular podcast called Do You Need a Ride with Karen Kilgariff, with uh, I think most people already know about that one because it's awesome. Anything? Well, else? thanks so much. That's yeah. it. Those two things. Those and two I, things. now I live in Montana and I don't know what comes next. Yay. Hey, maybe, <laughs> hey it's a good thing, man. Kick, kick the door wide open. You have so many opportunities, maybe. I'm thinking about doing one of those. If, if we don't have just like horrible community spread with the schools opening, I have like yeah. a half acre backyard. I'm going to put on a, a backyard comedy show. Oh, cool. Yeah, there are talk of uh, all kinds of tours like that that yeah. maybe... If it's outdoors and everything is right, right, we people just have to figure it out. And yeah. when it's figured out, I'll be like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. So that's maybe a reason I should go home and get back to my life and just stop uh, inner tubing and skateboarding in Montana. Oh, I'm jealous. At, like that's all I have to do. Oh, that's amazing in. though. All um, right. I've, I've been happy, so I'm happy to see you both. It's good I'm to see you again, I'm happy to see ben. you too. Yeah. Hang out All for right, just a second. Much, I'm just going to do a little bit of this because I wanted to talk to you about the Spotify playlist. But um, next week, our friend and comedian and Houston legend Andy Huggins will join us on the show to cover a song by the legendary Johnny Cash. I don't, I can't remember what song he picked, but we'll figure that out. Um, so some legend on legend action. That'll be fun. A uh, special thank you to Chuck Savage and Eddie Hawkins for our amazing intro music and to Sarah Wessling for the Guilty Pleasures vocals. Um, I'll just talk about Spotify and we'll let Chris go. But um, So we have a Spotify playlist where we put all of the songs that we cover plus the Guilty Pleasure songs. And Corbin pointed out, he's like, the more you guys do this, 75% of the Spotify playlist is going to be fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> it's because it's more of the Guilty Pleasure songs and less of the good right, ones. Right, right. But so I listened to it and I am just such a huge fan of Yacht Rock. And so there's so yeah. much outfield and like on it, yeah, air supply yeah. on it. But I was like, ah, I still love it. I think it's great. Um, all right, Chris, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for being here. Um, oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Again, really good to see you both. Good to see really you, Really appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. See you guys. Bye. Look at then and then there's this where it's like, oh, where's that? <laughs> oh, uh, right up your nose. Oh, there I go. <laughs> that was awesome. All right. Uh, if you would like to, I can't talk. If you would like to support the podcast, you can join our Patreon for five dollars a month. With that, you can go to patreoncom bar. With that five bucks, you will get early access to every episode. Um, you don't have to wait till Thursday. Some cool swag, and you get to vote on every other week song that we do. This week was a voting week. They chose Devil Inside. Um, I talked about the Spotify playlist. We have a website. It's called rockthecashbarpodcast.com. Go check it out. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you next Thursday with Andy Huggins. You know what does exist in this cash bar? What? Vogue. Vogue. Nice. Oh, supper.